sight reading basics. So I break down the sight reading steps into four easy steps and I have all my students memorize them. Uh, I try to keep it super simple so it basically boils down to checking over anything that is pitch related. So you're looking at notes very carefully, sharps, flats, naturals, and things like that. Second thing is uh, rhythm related, so anything pertaining to rhythm. And then the third thing would be any special categories that pertain to the students. So if it's a violin student, we would be looking at, um, you know, bowings, slurring, articulation, and anything else that wasn't already covered in the first two topics. And the fourth step would be to uh, mentally sort of rehearse it, at least the very beginning part of it, before you jump right in. So... Um, and then I have just a couple of overall rules that I go over. It's just only, um, you know, like two or three rules. So we'll go ahead and start with step one. Step one is pitch and everything related to pitch. So this is an, ex is an example from the Applebaum series. This is the green book, the uh, volume two. And so we're just going to look at the top lines. So I usually use this book as a sight reading book. So I make I make sections. So I'll say this is section one. I'll, I'll write a number one with the circle here. I'll just kind of split it off evenly. So maybe right here is two. I'll write two and circle it here. And then maybe a good place to start over here might be, uh, I don't know, this is a bit awkward, but maybe right here, I'll draw a big three and I'll circle it. So every day they can take one sight reading section. So, you know, the first one would go from here to there. All right. So let's just go ahead and look at from here to there for now. We're yeah. looking at everything pitch related. So uh, I noticed that the first thing I want to check for is the key signature. So we have F sharp, C sharp. If you think about, uh, if you think in terms of scales, that's a D scale. So if you're already familiar with playing a D major scale, then that would be helpful information. Uh, you, I also tell the students to think, of course, of course, it depends on their level. So, you know, if they're at a higher level or a lower level, I would advise them a little bit differently. So I would tell them, think about where all the F sharps on your violin are. So we have an F sharp, you know, E1, that's an example, or we have an F sharp as a D2. There aren't any examples in our portion up to here, but you do see some here. So there's your D2. So this is a high two, that's a regular one, so no problem there. I always remind them that we violinists, we like to play in the key of D major. We like two sharps, or we like one sharp, or we like three sharps. Usually those that is the area where we feel most comfortable. Um, and so this would be probably a good thing, right? Having a C sharp, there's our C sharp here, so it's two, high two on A string and the only C sharp we'd have to be careful of is on the G string but again we're not going to go past this rest here but there is a G string C sharp so that would be a high three so uh, unless you really think about that um, you know students at this level of sight reading they usually play that as a C natural by accident so um, then anything else pitch related? Well, I do look to see, I just scan it with my eyes. Scanning is always a good idea. And what I see is that there are some pitch changes here. These are called accidental. So we had a G natural and now we have to play G sharp. So this might be a danger zone. What I call danger zone is where a, a, a mistake is like 90% likely <laughs> okay so then here we have g sharp g natural so this is another area that's a danger zone and um, then right here we want to notice this is g0 but this is g1 so this is again probably something not so typical for a student uh, sight reading at this level so um, i also look at any like leaps or jumps like that that might be tricky so so far these are kind of stepwise oh i also notice um, fingerings this is part of pitch because if you're trying to read that pitch you do have to decide on what finger you're going to use so i do put that in that category the first category so using pinky there using zero here um this is not too bad, most of these are stepwise, but I would say starting from here, it gets a little bit tricky. You see the contour, the skip and the step in the opposite direction. Same here, it starts to get a bit jumpy here and see this, this change here, a string level change. 
and then here um, yeah up to here so this might be a tricky area pitch wise so let's go ahead and go to step two rhythm so rhythm wise again a good place to start is the time signature um, as there are four quarter notes per measure okay so then we go looking for um, quarter note beats and if you look most of these things can be can be understood uh, if you compare it against a quarter note I'd say the only thing that's trouble uh, might be trouble would be this one and this one this area and so um, here I would use like ta pony pizza pizza so if this is the beat ta pony pizza pizza so just for a brief moment we are going to subdivide that for uh, into three eighth notes same here ta that's why I, I'm shaking the ta syllable three times ta ta and that guy's ta by himself so ta ta pizza pizza so if you're not sure why I'm using these silly words um, to understand rhythm then I would direct you over to another video that I, I will be making soon uh, about the um, I can read music book series and that's where I teach the uh, the rhythm method that I use with my students so anyways um, you know kind of looking for quarter notes throughout and keeping a quarter note pulse is going to work here so I would tell them to decide how fast they're going to go at this stage and during step two rhythm uh, because then it starts to get them thinking about how difficult these things might be so how fast can they play that how fast can they play that right and so when we're in step two which is rhythm um, I'd have them look at the longest rhythm value and the shortest rhythm value. So that would be the quickest rhythm and then the longest rhythm would be the quarter note or actually the dotted quarter note right there. All right. If you go on, then the longest rhythm would be over here, the, the half note right there. And so that's important to know that when, you know, what is your, your high, what is your low? So you want to kind of um, chart that out and be prepared for that. So um, I would say for an intermediate sight reader, um, da, 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 I'm going to the, the trickiest part. De, da, dun, da, de, da, de, da. I'll probably go about this piece. So bum, 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 ba, ba, bum, 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 bum. So I try to have them pick their tempo um, right now at this stage. And then, um, you know, they get an idea. I have them say the rhythm words um, for any area that might be tricky. I also point out rests because um, students tend to just completely ignore rests or just stop time. You know, in their mental time clock, it stops during the rest um, automatically. So I encourage them to keep it going. Sometimes they take too long or sometimes they just don't wait long enough. Okay, so step three is, uh, I call it everything else. So whatever we didn't cover in pitch, step one, and whatever we didn't cover in st rhythm, step two, we're going to cover now in step three. So what I see that's quite uh, distinctive in this passage is the slurring, okay, and the bowing, so, and the articulations. So here I see it starts up bow, that's important to know how you're starting. And this means that you have to stop the bow. You see the this means that they're both up bow, but the dash means that you have to articulate them. So you have to have, actually play dun, dun. So that's important to know. These are legato, so you just can keep your bow moving and slurring throughout. Um, this comma really doesn't, doesn't change anything, so you don't have to pay too much attention to that. Later on, I can explain why that's there. Um, so again, this is like that, so dividing the bow into two parts right and then again here now here the bowing pattern is tricky so they they're going to want to kind of pre-rehearse that so we have slur separate slur slur separate slur separate and then quarter note right and then here we see staccatos so that's important to know that's what i that fits into the category of um, articulation so this one's slightly longer these are short 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 and then normal here kind of longer and then rest 
So the cutoff of this note matters also very much. Uh, what else is there to know? Um, after after uh, Boeing's and articulations, I would say the next, the only other thing I see that's pretty prominent is the dynamics. But I kind of, I hate to say this, but I kind of don't, don't uh, talk about dynamics so much because they're already struggling to get their pitches and rhythms right. Um, if the pitches and rhythms aren't right, then why focus more on the dynamics? So we try to get the dynamics, but I'm really a stickler about pitches and rhythms. So, so here it starts out piano. We have a, you know, kind of a hairpin here, kind of getting louder, softer, getting louder, softer. And then this, this is forte. So at the very least, I ask the students to remember it starts out with like kind of a more peaceful mood. And then here it's kind of more of a boisterous mood. So that's a good way to just, you know, show at least uh, you could, if they're taking a sight reading test, like they're doing a NISMA audition or some kind of state testing, and they're going to sight read this in front of a judge, then at least they could sort of, sort of show the judge that they have at least paid attention to that to a certain extent. So, you know, ending this section all, all strong and loud. So, so after step three, then really you're ready to start, except for one thing, and just to really imagine playing it. So what you can do is kind of like bow in the air, like and move your fingers a little bit, or you can elbow bow if you know what elbow bowing is. So that's another good way. But I would say at least rehearse up to here. So usually it's about one or two measures or you know about like 10 notes or something like that. And this is a super important step, step four, imagine playing it because if they don't do that often, they kind of start and they're already nervous and they, they feel uncomfortable. They start and then they stop. This happens about 90% of the time. So you don't want to do any do-overs. That's one of the main rules about sight reading. You have to keep your beat very, very steady. And you don't want to keep stopping and fixing because that's practicing. That's not sight reading. It's not showing you know, the judge, like say you're taking an orchestra audition and you're showing the judge that you can't, you know, make the music flow. So the idea is to play something for the first time, but act like it's not your first time, that you've been practicing it for your whole life. So you wanna always give off that impression. So you always wanna keep your beat going. And even if you completely fail this, you just keep on going. That's one of the hardest parts I find for students is that they get stuck on the fact that they um, they made a mistake. And so they usually, um, you know, have to stop and kind of dwell on it for a little while. So it, it, when you make a big mistake, you just try to keep on going. And then, um, you know, so the main, main things are uh, keep your beat steady because the judge is gonna be doing this inside, right? Their minds while you play. Second thing, always try to have a good intonation, right? And third thing is, if there are any repeats, you want to ask the judge beforehand if you should take the repeats or not, because that's another thing that may really throw you off and, and make you nervous uh, during the midst of your sight reading test. So, so anyway, step one, two, three, and four, and then, then what you do is you jump right in and you play it. And uh, this took quite a while to explain, but the more you do it, the, um, the steps become faster. And actually, you should do all of those four sight reading steps mentally and silently within about 30 seconds. So that is the goal that you should have to be able to do all those steps within about a 30 second range. And then you, you play. All right. Well, uh, hope that helps and leave comments below if you have any further questions or any feedback. All right, good luck.